Good evening and welcome to the Greville Arms Hotel in Mullingar, where I'm about to interview Karen Nolan TD, one of the heroes of the last referendum campaign and one of those tiny band that stood up to the appalling bullying to which pro-life TDs were subjected. Karen isn't just a TD. She has a career behind her and a lot of things going on. She's had more than an interesting year. Karen Nolan, first of all, what's the family background? Well, I'm the eldest of four children. Um, my mom uh, would have been a stay-at-home mom. My father was a salesman for a number of years and he went back to college actually. He left school very young, but he went back and he studied business information systems in Athlone. So he, uh, right. yeah, which was a an unusual thing to do, thing to do at the time. Thing to do. Yes. Um, I was the first then obviously in the family to, to go to college. To go straight to college out of school. So I qualified as a teacher. You qualified as a yeah. teacher, secondary or national? It was national, national, yes. Why national yes. teaching, girl? I absolutely loved it. Would you believe I was in the Gale School here in Mullingar. Um, in Mullingar? Gale School on Willen was my first job. I did my degree in Minute, Irish okay. and Irish Studies. I came out and I said I'd take a year out to yes. see what you wanted to do, wanted where to life do. was. And my first job was as a substitute teacher in Gale School on Willen. So I taught there for about, I'd say about a year. And I decided there and then that this is what I want to do. This you knew immediately. You know, I knew immediately that I really wanted to do national school teaching. And preferably now, you said you did Irish yeah. and, and yeah. Irish studies. Was the Irish language always a big love of yours? Yes, huge, huge. It was a subject I was always strong of. tend not to get that love for the language. That's true, I suppose, yeah, yeah the ne negative, uh, you know. There can be, or, there know, can be. But, th but that's not definitely not the case in, in my situation and, you know. And you've obviously enjoyed passing that love of the language on to others because Absolutely. you now work in a Gaelic school, don't you? No, I'm now a TD for my sins. Oh, sorry, you did work in a Gaelic school, <laughs> though. Yes, I, I know you're I a TD, of course. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. No, my last job then was as an acting principal in another Gale school outside Mount Rath town. At the time I substituted for Liam O'Neill who was the GA president. Oh, right. I had no ambition or no aspiration in going anywhere near politics at that particular time. So you went into the Gale, the, the, so the school? I went into the school. I was there I think in my, in my second year and a nomination for the local elections came up and I was approached. I ran and in my area then. You the were approached area. by Sinn Féin? I was, I was. And that would have been 2009? No, it would have been 2013. 13? Yeah, right. So you weren't a member of Sinn Féin pr prior to that, were you? I was only since April of 2012. April that 2012. Very, very so that's yeah. post ceasefire, post uh, Good Friday Agreement Absolutely. Sinn Féin. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I'm asking that is that we had a question by email. Once we said that we were interviewing Carl, a question came in by email about that. That's why I'm, I'm terrifying that with you. So you become a county councillor. What was that like? You're now combining being yeah. a county councillor with being a school principal. That sounds yeah, like you were to be running a lot. It was a very challenging year because um, my youngest I was only a couple of years old. I had a toddler. And oh. uh, yeah, so how many children have you? Children. I have two children. You have two children. Yeah. yeah. And the youngest is. The youngest is now eight. So yeah. in yeah. twenty um, fourteen, that child was only four. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was tough yeah. going. Uh, yeah, it was at times. It was yeah. challenging, and yeah. Do you know, I don't regret um, anything I did. I always loved a challenge. I always wanted to push myself and see, and you know. I was just going to say, yeah, I don't that, think you're a woman that. That's the person that I am. I would be very determined, that, and, and that I want to try. Quite shy of a challenge. No, I, yeah. I, I enjoy a challenge, and indeed, that stood to me. Um, you well, know, but it, it certainly no, did in the last I, I have year. No regrets. It was difficult. Um, it must being have been. an acting principal yeah. in a two-teacher school. Because that mean, means you have to teach, yeah. you have to work as principal, that's and right. you're now a county councillor. That's correct, that's yeah. correct. So that's tough going. It was. And then you made it harder. Yes, I made it harder on myself. Um, In 2016, 16, yes, you were elected to Dáil Éireann. I was, you know. I was. Yeah. And you've been, a, at this stage, you've been effectively a politician for just two years. Yeah, I was only settling in the county council, really. 
and I got elected and I, I don't think that the party thought you know that there was a real chance of getting that seat yes but I was determined to prove them wrong and I had when you were running you yeah. weren't running just to make a, a case you no, were running to absolutely. take a seat I was running yeah. and gave it 110 percent as I would with everything any job yes. I ever did in my life yeah. uh, which was teaching obviously in politics I gave it 110 percent now and that's I was fortunate to, to get the seat 2016 mm. we've had the first more than the first rumblings at yeah. that stage of yeah. the coming campaign yeah. uh, the government Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil are by then effectively committed to it what was Sinn Féin's position? When I joined in 2012, Sinn Féin was a pro-life party. Sinn Féin and was a pro-life pro party. party? It was a pro-life party, yes. And gradually, by degrees, the goalposts started to move. A little bit at a time. Yeah, a little bit at a time. I did express concern. I think it was about six or seven months elected as a TD in the party. And I did express concern okay. about the direction it was going. And what was the answer you got? Well, the answer I got at this t at that particular time was, "Oh no, we're only we're only looking at the hard cases only." We're only looking at hard cases. The hard cases only. Yes. Now I was still uncomfortable with that. Yes. But went away to reflect on it. But yeah. what annoyed me was bit by bit you could see the goalpost widening and widening. And we stopped talking about hard cases and we absolutely. started talking about and choice. Absolutely. And then we had a liberal um, free for all regime. You know, yeah. just the floodgates opened. Yeah. I think, you know, like a lot of the parties, they saw this is the popular thing to do. Yes. This is the thing to do if you want to get votes, and we're going to and do And this it. is the thing that's popular with the media. Absolutely. Yeah. And all principles and values and everything else, I believe, went out the window. I couldn't stand for that, so I decided eventually, obviously, to... to I saw you speak in Bar, and you spoke about the agony that you had over this, mm -hmm. and how hard it was to deal with what you saw happening and the knowledge that you were going to have to break mm. with the party. How hard was that? It was very difficult because I had given so much commitment to the party. I had helped yes. build the party in County Offaly Definitely. along with a great team around yeah. me in a very short space of time. I'd given 110%, I'd made the sacrifices and everything else. Yes. But I felt, I felt so hurt by them and so let down and so betrayed. And I think anyone who has strong Catholic values felt the same. Yes. I could understand yes. how many people around the country were saying the same thing. And when I say around the country, including our comrades in, in the north, yes. they, they were feeling the same way. And I felt yeah. it was the ultimate betrayal. I, I felt, you know, we had no place anymore within this party that was going liberal, that was becoming nearly like a second Labour Party. It was yes. becoming communist in its yes. direction, and yeah. I felt no. It was no there. longer the Sinn Fein you had it joined. Was no it was no longer, longer the Sinn Fein not. people understood anymore. No, 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 absolutely not. They yeah. seem to have just been embracing communism, and, and I say that because yes. that's exactly what it is. If you look yeah. at the policies and the direction it has since yeah. moved in, much less national, much, much less green, much more red. Exactly. Ex yeah. And I couldn't stand for that. I mean, yes, going this back is not who you were. Not who I was, and, yeah. and but you know, I, I just you know, felt you're I didn't have a place anymore. A very recent TD. You're you're mm. two years there. That must have been very hard to stand up against the full weight of the party. I I just did it. I'd be yeah. very strong and determined and strong-willed that if I believe in something, I'll go with it. I don't care. You're not going what to back pressure down. or what punishments that there are, yes. um, I will just do it. Yeah. And that's very much who I am. You're not if a I coward. If I say something, yeah. I follow By through. any means. Yeah. So at what point did the break happen? Mm. You know, at what point, where, where between 2016 and 2018, at what point did Carl Nolan go, sorry, can't hack this anymore, lads, I'm out? Well, when we, did that We moment? had a vote on legislation in March. Yes. Which led to me being suspended for three months. Okay. Um, that was um, on the holding of a referendum on the 8th Amendment. So you voted, voted against, against holding voted the referendum? Against, yeah, yeah. I did. So I did. you were declaring very early on? Very early on. Because yes. there was a position that some TDs adopted, oh well, it's a matter of public concern now, yeah. I'm pro-life, but I'll vote for allowing a referendum. Correct. You didn't? I didn't, no. You said no, no referendum, no. this is a right that can't be no. taken. And, and it wasn't that I didn't believe in democracy, don't get me wrong, I do. Yes. But this referendum was a life or death referendum. Yes. And I wanted to stay on the side of life. And I said from very early on, this is not who I am. 
this does not resonate with the values of the 1916 proclamation. Yes. Or 1916 cherish, proclamation. Cherish all the children cherish equally. Cherish all the children equally. Just let's kill some of them. And the first line mentions God. And That's here right. we had all of our values. And the dead generations. Exactly. Yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't go with it. Yes. And I decided to put my cards on the table. Do so the you did that that day, day the, ref the referendum bill yeah. comes up, first vote on it in the doll, you voted against it. Yes. Party suspends you for three months. Three months, that's correct. So then after three months, they're going to let you back in. That's correct, yes. What happened then? My suspension was due to be lifted on the 21st of June, and the Ardesh in Belfast took place yes. that, the week beforehand. And at that Ardesh, um, a number of common throughout the country put forward motions on the conscience vote. Yes. So I was eagerly watching what was going to happen and I was hoping, for the sake of many in the party, that we would get a conscience vote. That is, that the, the party would allow a free they, vote, they that this would be a conscience issue, issue yeah. that the party didn't dictate a position correct, on it. Correct, correct. could I vote either way. For a, demo, uh, you know, a democratic party with republican ideals, I thought, well, surely this, this will is, happen. This will be allowed. This will be allowed. So, so what so happened? What happened was it was defeated, um, but somehow I believe that pressure was put on Cumann throughout the state to not right. put in motions calling you, for the conscience vote. You think that the leadership actively went after the common, I, don't do this, don't... I don't know whether it was yeah. leadership or management or whoever, but somebody did. Somebody I, I believe did. influence came. Yes. Because yeah. I know when I was suspended in March, I was assured by a number of the common chairpersons that they would be putting forward motions for the conscience vote in Offaly. Yes. In the end, it was only my own common um, of Cadamstown that put forward. So Cadamstown was the only single they were common, the only common, despite the fact that several commons said despite they would the do fact, this. Yes, exactly. So influence was brought to bear somehow. I, I believe so. Yeah. I, I believe the whole thing was rigged, and I yeah. do believe that it will come back to bite them because yeah. you're denying people their voice, you're denying people the right to vote yes. according to their conscience. It's never a good it's, idea. It's a fundamental it, it's, issue. It's a fundamental issue in a democracy, in isn't it? In a democracy, it? absolutely. Now, when those motions were either withdrawn or defeated mm -hmm. in June, what happens then? What happened was I was back in Dáil Éireann on Tuesday the 19th of June, along with every other TD, Yes. and I delivered my letter. As soon as I reached uh, the building, yes. I delivered my letter to the Chief Whip of the Sinn Féin Party. The Chief Whip had suspended me, therefore right. I dealt with him directly. directly with I handed him. him my letter of resignation, which was only about three lines long. Saying that short and sweet. Short and sweet. Probably not terribly that sweet for them, but no, mm, yeah. That, that was it, that I was gone because of uh, the way things yeah. had unfolded. I no longer had a place in the party and I was going. That has to be hard, Carl. It has to be hard because, you know, you've worked with these people. Some of them are your friends. Mm -hmm. And now you have to say, sorry, lads, I have no place in this party. Just saying that has to hurt. Yeah. I have no place yeah. in this party. Yeah, well, I think what really hurt was just the disillusionment that, yes. you know, you believe you're uh, in a party where, where you have a place, where you have a role to play. Yes. And you believe that... that you've built uh, it. I you've, went, you've, you've gotten I a seat where nobody absolutely. thought there was a seat. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I believe that they were truly democratic. Yes. And that they would be So there. the disillusionment was so savage. It, it at was that disillusionment. Point. And of course, it, there was obviously, I had become good friends with many people in yes. the party. There are great people. Yes. In every party. Well, of course, yeah. And I had built up yeah. friendships with, with yeah. some of those people. And Which brings us to the, the, the question. I mean, the other outstanding TD out of this is your friend and colleague, uh, Padre Tobin. He has started a party, in mm. 2 mm -hmm. but you're not in it. No, I'm not in it. I will be standing as an independent. I wish Padre the very best of luck. We completely agree on the issue of pro-life and always will. Yes. And so do the independent TDs in the doll. Yeah. Um, but no, I feel it, I'm happy doing what yeah. I'm doing now. And indeed, I do work very closely with the other independent senators yes. and TDs. But you don't want to be in a party I, right now. I don't want, and yeah. I don't think many people who had my experience would want to be in a party again. No, 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 the, 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 the scaldation has to run deep. Yes, you know? yeah. So yeah. And there's also, of course, the fact that Padder is the sole TD right now for Inter. It probably would put a great deal of pressure on you. You'd, you'd be the, their second TD. Yeah. There'd certainly have to be a leadership role there, wouldn't there, in the sense, oh, an informal one anyway. Absolutely. You'd and be going around the country. That's mm. correct, that's correct. But look, I, I just feel that I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I'm very active on pro-life. I Definitely. spoke in the Mansion House. Um, 
with Gianna Kerr just you on spoke Saturday at the, night at the dinner at the, the yeah. ball and that's yeah. right that's correct the one, that, the one that Niall Ring has been criticised widely by exactly, um, yeah. by yeah. the um, pro-abortion movement for having absolutely you know, which is more than interesting in itself Gianna Kerr the charity that helps women on their worst days is the charity that the abortion movement has decided to demonise. Uh, it says a lot about them. It does indeed, absolutely. Now, how is the campaign going? We're heading towards a general election, maybe not this year, but certainly 2020. Mm. How, you have a campaign running. I do, you have absolutely. People helping. I do, I do. I mean, I stayed working. I got on with it and moved on very quickly. I was determined not to let anything set me back. Even though it was hard. You brought the same energy you brought to being a principal and a counsellor. Yeah, I just kept going. I'm lucky because I have a good, I have a good uh, group of people behind good. me in Offaly and indeed people who have stayed with me all of the way since the time I ran in the local election. I'm very lucky to have those people. And That's I am great. getting offers of support every day of the week and I'm very grateful for that. And I do feel that things are going very well. Things are positive. I give it my best shot. Good. Um, I want to represent the people of Offaly. I want to be the pro-life rural voice and I'll, I'll do everything in my power. Well, Carl, I think that you represent continue. more than the people of Offaly. You represent an enormous swathe of Irish public opinion. Now, while you're doing that, I, I talked about, we talked about Janicare being demonised. Mm. You were demonised. I was, yeah. I you was, found that campaign inside the doll. What happened? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I suppose, um, like any of the pro-life TDs, you know, we all had a difficult time in there. Any time we brought forward reasonable amendments, whether they were to do with the pain relief for unborn babies or conscientious objection for our doctors and nurses and pharmacists, which I felt very strongly about because I had yes. conscientious objection myself as a politician. And all of those amendments were just... The, you know, they were shut down, they were knocked, they were mocked, they were... It was unbelievable what went on in the doll, and I'd encourage any of you, you know, to maybe go back and look at the Oireachtas videos and see exactly what happened. But we were shouted down, we were insulted, we were... There you was name-calling. You mentioned before, I know, several times, mm. the jeering and cat-calling mm. from the media. Yeah, yeah. Sitting there yeah. as journalists, as if you like, our yeah. eyes. Yeah, well, what happened with the media now in the committee room was, I have to say, there was one reasonably balanced report yes. um, from, the, from the RT reporter who was in there. But definitely there was an article done by the Irish Times and tweets went out by the Irish Times. I want to correct that. The tweets Irish went Times. Out and they were yeah. completely incorrect. Um, those tweets made reference to the fact that I had drawn the media's attention to the fact that there was TDs sitting over to my left, TDs from conservative parties and left-wing parties, who were laughing as the pain relief amendment was being discussed. They were laughing in the chamber. I turned around and drew the journalists' attention to the matter. Yes. But one particular journalist decided to put her own little spin on it and tweeted out something that was completely yeah. false. And, and, and well, it seems a perfectly it. reasonable thing to do, mm. to draw the attention Absolutely. of the I felt, media. I felt out of fairness. It must have been in, infuriating yeah. it was, to it watch was. TDs laugh and jeer. Yeah, yeah it was, it was. You know, it, at, at, a, at, at a, a bid to put in pain relief. Yeah. The sort of pain relief that you have to give a horse on a yeah. race course if you're using a phenol injection. That's correct, that's correct. It, it, was, yeah. it was absolutely outrageous and, you know, heartbreaking because these were yeah. women. These were women, women who was laughing. And I just thought there's something seriously wrong here. Um, when the, subject of, pain, of when the subject of pain relief yeah. for a tiny infant yeah. is a matter of laughter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I would have called it out and yeah. indeed my statement would be, would be on the record. You're a mother. Mm. It must have really hurt you and infuriated you as a mother mm. to mm. see that. Because you know what it's like to yeah. have a child. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It is, I mean, it, it just... I, I don't know anymore. Um, we've lost all sense of, they talk about compassion, but where was the compassion for the little unborn baby um, in terms of pain relief? There was absolutely none. In fact, there was no respect shown. And, and it does... It not does only was there not compassion, there wasn't even respect. It does infuriate me and, yeah. and indeed disillusion me in that we're becoming like this yeah. as society. And that we have people elected to represent the views of, of their electorate, and all yes. of their electorate wouldn't have been pro-choice. Not by a long shot. To see yeah. that sort of a carry-on taking yeah. place um, in, in the doll, it's a disgrace, really, yeah. you know. Carl, right now, a lot of pro-life people are disillusioned, 
they're depressed. They believe that the victory is final for the pro-abortion side. What would you say to them? I don't believe that for a second. And all I need to do is just look at people who were here tonight, who took the time to come out, and thank you all for coming out, because that's what we need in every area. Well, I can see um, there's a big movement, pro-life movement, gathering momentum. And I could see that uh, on Saturday night in the Mansion House. Yes. Young people coming out, um, trying to do their best for pro-life and indeed to protect mothers and babies. And I really do feel that all is not lost. If we look at what's happening in America and in many states, there has been a rollback. There have been more people taking part in pro-life marches. And I do believe that we will get there, but we do need to chip away. We do need to be determined Little and steadfast. Little business of time. In, in, yeah. in, you know, we can't give up and we can't become disillusioned and go away. What? The other crowd didn't go away in 1983 when, when they lost. You know, so True. like that, we have to stay chipping away and putting out the counter arguments that we're talking about life here. It's a life or death subject. And it's as simple as that. I see it as a very black and white issue. And we're talking about the most vulnerable in society, the unborn baby who needs a voice. And we need to be that voice because if we're not there, who else is going to do it? And we, we do all have a role to play in that. And I certainly will do my part as a TD. Karen Nolan, TD, you're a hero. Thank you very much.